to buy this yarn for another project. It doesn't even need to be done. That does not even need to be done right now. I should have bought more black yarn. Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am attempting to make myself a crocheted vest. I've been seeing these vests a lot, and I feel like crocheting is the new it thing to do, and I've been doing it for years. It's becoming somewhat popular and giving me ideas to actually want to crochet again, which is great. I'm gonna show you some examples of the vest that I am talking about. It's like a giant granny square, basically. That's all the only way I can describe it, is when I've made my granny square, like the black and white checkered one, the little tiny square, it's just a gigantic square that you just change colors. Like, here's the thing. This project seems super easy, and I feel like I can definitely do it, but also at the same time, I'm like, is it gonna be as easy as I think? Is it gonna, like, be as quick and fast? Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. So I know I gravitate towards, like, these colors, and eventually I would like to make a granny square vest with these colors, but today I'm actually gonna go the opposite, and I'm gonna do one of those weird, funky ones where it's just a bunch of random colors with a black border, and I'm gonna show you, like, an example of a blanket that I'm talking about, but I'm just gonna make it in vest form. Unfortunately, I can't find one on Pinterest. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna make it up as I go along and hopefully the colors look good together. Cause I don't know. Like I wanna mention that this is kind of a tutorial, but it's also not a tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I kinda know what I'm doing, but I'm also making it up as I go along like all my other videos. So for people who are new to my channel, I don't do tutorials normally like everyone else does where I just start off with the tutorial and you just learn to make things up as I go along. And I let you know how things are going along the way. If that's what you're interested in, stick with me for this because uh, this is gonna be interesting. I hope it turns out cute. This is either gonna go really well or really bad, so uh, we will soon see. But yeah, it's just a black border with a bunch of different colors in it. You know, I got your blues, your purples, your greens, some yellows, some oranges, some whites. I think that will look really cool together. If the project goes swimmingly and according to plan, maybe I'll make some more. It just, you know, I gotta get the first one done out of the way. See how that goes. I'm really trying to use as much yarn that I already have, because you know I have a lot of yarn. Did go through my yarn bin to see what I had. Okay, so here's all the yarn that I have, most of it. I think I have like another thing of this somewhere, like the thicker yarn, but not using the thicker yarn for this project. I am just gonna pick out some colors I think would look cool together, and we'll see if it works. I'm gonna do my best to find yarn that I already have. I do purple. I think I wanted to... Are these the same color purple? Why do I have two purples that are the exact same shade of color? Like, I don't use purple for anything. It doesn't make any sense why I have two purples. I want a dark blue. I don't have a dark blue. I'll take the black, which I will need. This is a very thin black that I bought for a different project and I never did it. These are kind of like the colors that I'm going for in marker form. I'm gonna turn all this yarn into a sweater vest. It is pretty much a crocheted sweater vest. That's what I'm making and it, it checks out because I'm obsessed with sweater vests lately. For this project, I'm going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook that is also a USH8. Also a pair of scissors and a bunch of yarn. Feel free to pause the video and take a picture of this because this will be the dimensions of the two squares that I will be making. So for the project, I'm gonna start in the center and then move my way out. So I'm gonna start with a slip knot. So I'm going to pinch the tail end with my right hand. Then I'm gonna grab the yarn with my left hand, just kind of like this. Then I'm going to twist over and grab the tail end just like this, still holding it on with your right hand. Pull through, then I'm going to insert my crochet hook I'm gonna pull tightly. If you watch my one video about me making the black and white granny square sweater, I will show a picture of it right here so you can see what I'm talking about. It's the exact same steps on how to make a basic granny square, except instead of me making a bunch of little squares, I'm just going to be making two gigantic squares. I'm going to chain four, that is yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, that's three, that's four. Then I'm gonna take my hook and insert it into the first chain that I made, yarn over, and I'm going to do a slip stitch. So I'm going to pull through both of those loops, and there we have our little circle, the little beginning of the giant square that this is going to eventually become. Now I'm going to chain three, so that's one, two, three, and then back into this center spot, ooh, if I can find it, back into the center of the loop that I just made, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So I just made myself a double crochet. And then I'm going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. What I ended up doing was I chained my three, I did a double crochet, I did another double crochet, and then this here is going to be one, one, one petal? It's not a petal, because I'm not making a flower. What is that called? The first little petal-ish thing. I just want to quickly show you what I'm doing. So this is what it'll eventually look like. Yes, I've already made it beforehand because I wanted to make sure all the colors look good together and I like the colors together. But what I just did was I just made my first little one of these guys. So I'm gonna show you how to make, uh, like, I don't know, 200 more of these things. The next step is I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And the reason for that chain is I will bring up my demonstration yet again. When I made that chain, that chain is literally this little thing right here. It's a corner so I can, you know, put other of these little doodads in them. That's what I just did. After I made the corner, I'm going to do three more double crochets. So that was yarn over, insert back into the middle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Doing this two more times. Okay, there we go. Just made the next little guy. All right, and now I'm going to make a third one. So again, I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. I'm going to do three more double crochets into the middle. I'm gonna make one more. So now I'm going to chain three more. One, two, three. I'm going to put my hook into the second stitch right here. This is the first chain that I made. I'm going to just skip this little guy here and go right into here. And now I need to start my second color. It's going to be a yellow. Take my yellow and drape it over the crochet hook. Just drape it over like that. Then I'm going to do a slip stitch. So I'm going through these two and this one. Make sure there's enough tail like that. I'm gonna leave that there for a second. Then, where are my scissors? I put them down for two seconds. So now I'm gonna cut the white yarn. And with the tails, I'm just gonna knot them together. So that's what it's looking like. Now I'm gonna be working on the second layer. Each layer is gonna be a little bit different with how you start. And well, there's really only two two differences, okay? It's like every other one, you have to do a different step. Let's just get into it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It'll be easier once once I show you. Gonna need to chain four, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. That's a chain. And what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna go into this one here and you're gonna do two of these guys, here two, there two. Here you're gonna do two, but instead of doing the third double crochet on the second one, this, this right here is the third double crochet on the second one. I know, I know, you're probably looking at this and be like, Michelle, you make absolutely no sense. Well, I'm just letting you know why I'm leaving it there. And then eventually, when we get back to there, you will understand why. And that fourth one is just it's gonna be that space. Three double crochets into the little gap that I have right here into the corner. I also just wanna let you know, I think everything on this vest is going to be a double crochet. I think everything is just a double crochet. I think I might get into some ribbing later, but everything's just double crochets. And now I'm going to chain three, two, three. So you're always chaining three in your corners. I'm gonna do three more into that same corner. In between the corners, I'm going to just chain one. And that is because if I look over back to this demonstration, that one chain is so then that way this can fit inside of it. You're going to repeat this process three more times. And then again, chaining one and you got to do it again and again. Now that I'm on my last corner, I just did this little guy. So I'm going to do my chain of three to make the corner. And then back into here, I'm only going to do two double crochets instead of the three. Now that you have your two double crochets, remember how I made this extra chain? I'm going to loop my hook into both of those stitches, just like this. Add my next color, and my next color is orange. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I leave a bit of a tail, drape it over, and then now I'm doing a slip stitch. So I'm gonna pull through those two and pull through this. 
This here is that chain of three that I made. That way it kind of goes in with this cluster of three double crochets. And the reason why I made this here is to build up the height because if you say didn't chain it and then you skipped over here and tried to do your three chain, it, it would be very like lopsided. So that's why you have to do this little stitch. And then remember how I said there was gonna be a fourth stitch? That fourth stitch is just to create that gap right here. Like how I made that extra chain here, here and here. That fourth extra chain is the gap for this. Moving on to the next layer, cut the yellow and then tie this together. This layer here is gonna be a little bit different than for this. So how I had chained the four and then I like moved over and did this here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that little, this little cluster, I'm just gonna make the cluster right here. Quickly just wanna show you what would happen if you didn't chain that. Instead of chaining, I'm like, I'm just gonna do my double crochet right into here. I don't need to chain. Chaining is for suckers, right? Yeah. I don't know about you, but uh, that, that looks pretty crooked. Does not look like that. This is the reason you gotta chain three so you can build your height. That way it's nice and flat and not on an angle. So just wanted to demonstrate the importance of why you, you actually do need to do your little chains. Starting off this cluster by chaining three. All right, and now I'm gonna do two more double crochets and that's two. Remember, I only have to do two double crochets because I chained that three. So this is what it's looking like. Now I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna go all the way over into the corner. I'm gonna do my three double crochets. That's three, chain my three, doing three more. To go from here to here, I'm gonna chain one. So the same way that I chained one here, I'm going to chain one. Okay, I have my three, I'm gonna chain one and then I'm gonna do my three more. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, it's a lot easier showing you what I've already done while I'm showing you the steps to do it so that way you can see why I'm doing certain things and seeing how it's gonna turn out in the end. So for each one of these, you're never having to add anymore. It's just every time you make a square, there's gonna be extra spaces. That's how it grows. So it's not like you're adding an extra square somewhere. It's just literally every time you make it, it just doubles the amount of squares essentially. You just keep going until you're done. In between each one, one on the sides here. Like that's a single chain, that's a single chain, that's a single chain. And then in the corners are the three chain. I hope that makes sense. It's the best I can describe it. All right, so I'm gonna continue going around this whole thing and I will catch back up with you when I am here. The exact same steps. I am back on my last cluster of three. Now because I had chained the three and made like the little cluster here, I do need to do three double crochets in this last corner. All right, and then I'm going to chain one and now I'm going to insert my hook into this that's that three chain here and then it's just one over so this one here I'm going to start my next color which is going to be this blue color going to drape it over leave a bit of the tail pull through everything then on the back side I've already lost there they are I'm going to cut the orange and then I'm going to tie the two ends together now that we are on the fourth row, cause that's like one row, two row, three row. I'm going to do the same steps that I did to make the yellow row, which is I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Three double crochets into this spot here. That there is three. And then I'm gonna chain one. You're just gonna keep repeating the exact same process, okay? And you're just gonna keep going around. So any of the corners, that's where you do your two clusters with the three chains in the middle, and then all these like empty spaces here, you're just doing one cluster of three double crochets. I don't know if these are called clusters. That's just kind of what I'm calling them. I don't know what I'm talking about. For this row here is the exact same method here where you chain the four, go all the way around, and then this chain becomes part of your last cluster. And then the next row above that is going to be the same as the orange row where instead of chaining that four and leaving it You're just going to make your cluster by itself The steps just repeat themselves over and over and over until you have your square And then when I get here, I'm gonna make the green row the purple row and I'm just gonna keep continuing Until I get as many rows as I feel comfortable and I feel comfortable with this and then I'm gonna do my black border So the black color is my border and it's gonna be my sides So that's why I haven't incorporated it into the rest of this project once you're done making your square You add the border to it I'm just gonna keep going around with all the different colors and I will catch back up with y'all when my whole square is done and I am ready 
ready to put the border and finish the square before I start doing the sides because that's a whole different thing that I have not even tested out yet and I'm not too sure what I'm going to do. Keep doing this and come back probably tomorrow because this is going to take me all night. Not all night, but it's going to take me at least a few hours to finish it because every time you add a layer, like the first few layers are super easy, but then when you get to like the bigger layers, it takes a lot more time. I just want to point out that the border is the same as any of the other rows. I'm just showing you how to close up the border before you can start the other steps. Now that the border's done, I'm going to do a slip stitch to close it off. So yarning over, pulling through all three, grabbing my scissors, cutting the yarn, yarn over, pull through, and then just pull really, really tight. And to make sure that's not going anywhere, I'm just going to tie it to the yarn down here. That is that. Both the pieces are done. I have the front and the back or the back and the front. I'm not too sure which one is gonna be which. The plan is to kind of have it like this, I think. I think that's what I want. So one's gonna go on the back, one's gonna go on the front. So if you ever watch my videos and think, hey, she knows what she's doing. I don't, I never do. I go into every project without a plan, just assuming in my head, I'm like, yeah, I kind of can figure out how it works, but um, I don't know. My plan is I'm going to continue doing this black border for the shoulder pieces as well for the side pieces. And then I think at the bottom I am gonna do like that ribbing effect. If you watch my other videos I always do the ribbing effect on the bottom of my crocheted cardigans. I think it will be okay because I think it will taper it in like slightly. I want it to be more of a square. I want it to be more boxy. That's the look I'm going for. I'm going for this. I found some safety pins. I didn't think I needed the safety pins. Oh goodness it does fit through but I have a stupid clip in my hair. Okay. I think those gigantic clips from like the 90s that are becoming popular again. This is what it's looking like. I do like it. That for the shoulders, I think. I don't know how many times I gotta say I'm making this up. I was like, well, but I'm making this up as I go along. What I'm thinking is for the sides, I'm not gonna connect them, like just attach it. I'm going to do more of this style of crocheting for the sides. I'm gonna add some shoulders and then I'm gonna add the sides. I need to measure. Where's my measuring tape? Measuring tape. Now I do want this to be a little bit bigger than smaller. I don't want it to be too tight because it is yarn and it's gonna be a little thick, a little heavy. It's gonna keep me warm essentially. I just like how it's sitting just like this, right? But here's the thing. If I make it too tight, it's gonna be too warm. But if I make it too loose, it's gonna just be too loose and frumpy and I don't really want that look. But also it is acrylic yarn but we'll have some give to it when I am done with it. Do two shoulders right here in the black. The sides are also going to be black because I really want this to pop. Let's let's go and do these shoulders. If you want to take a photo of this, this is the dimensions of the shoulders. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. So that's there. One, two, three, four, five. And then this part here is going to be my opening for my head. So I'm going to start off with a slip knot through that. Going through this corner here. And I'm just going to make myself a uh, slip stitch. So just yarning over and pulling through everything. Then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Yarn over, put through, yarn over, pull through. And I'm going to be doing three, well, two double crochets. The steps I'm doing here are going to be the exact same steps as here, except for going in a square. I'm going to be just going across and then back and forth and back and forth. Chain one, yarn over into the next spot there. Three double crochets. Chain one, yarn over another three. Chain one, another three, chain one, and then three more in here. Now I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna chain one, two, three, four. Back around, I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through. Again, these are just all double crochets. I'm not doing anything different that you haven't already seen. So this is what's kind of looking like this, and I'm just gonna keep going back and forth. So when I'm in this corner piece here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this little space between, this is like the first chain of three that I made, and then these are the two clusters of double crochets. I'm gonna yarn over, insert there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and that. 
So it's looking like that. And then I'm gonna chain four, flip my project back over. What I'm gonna do here is because I did that little chain of four, I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two. I'm gonna go to the end of here and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do there. So I'm gonna finish my clusters here. And then in this spot again, I'm gonna do my three clusters in here. And that's what it's looking like. And then I'm gonna chain four. One, two, three. Whenever you get to the end, you're always just gonna chain four because then you're gonna move over into here and what you're doing is just creating that little space or gap so that way you can make another row of these. Going to keep going back and forth and back and forth until I have a total of one, two, three, four, five. I think if I have eight and then I'll flip it over and attach it to the other side. Okay, so I just safety pinned it real quick just to see what it would look like and I like this here. So now I'm gonna do some slip stitches from here to where that ends. So to do that, I'm just inserting my hook through both. Oh my goodness, where did that go? Okay, so we're gonna put that over. Inserting my hook there first, slip stitch, and then I'm gonna go through both the tops and there. Yarn over, pull through, pull through. Just a bunch of slip stitches until I can't slip stitch no more. I'm gonna flip it over about right, cause it's like, this is just, there's a thicker line there. Okay, my scissors, cut that. Yarn over, pull through, pull tightly. And that is one shoulder part done. Now I just have to do the same for the other side. Shoulders are done, great. I think it looks good. Now I just have to do the side. So originally I was gonna go up to here with the side, but I decided not to do that. So instead I'm actually gonna go where this, um, I was gonna say paper clip safety pin is. I think that'd be good. I think more arm, space is my best option because I would hate it to be like way too tight and then just be uncomfortable and I know myself if it's uncomfortable I'm not gonna wear it have to make sure that it is correct before I finish it and not be like yeah I'll be fine and then later on being like no I don't like it so I'm gonna do the side now and I'm gonna do the exact same way that I did the top but I'm gonna go like sideways and then I just have to do the bottom ribbing but I can't do the ribbing until the sides are done so I can just do the whole thing and then looking at my yarn this is all the black yarn I have don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this today. What sucks is I did go to Michael's today. I know I went to Michael's to buy this yarn for another project. Doesn't even need to be done. That does not even need to be done right now. I should have bought more black yarn. I should be okay. I feel like yarn goes a lot farther than I think that it's gonna go. Sometimes I think I need way more yarn and I, I didn't even need one ball of yarn. And then other times I'm like, I'll be fine with one and then I have to buy three. So hopefully this will do it. And this wasn't even a full ball of yarn when I started the project. Before I start making the sides, these are the dimensions. Well, the original idea was I was gonna go like back and forth like this, but I decided I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do the same way that I did the shoulders where I'm gonna just work off what I already have here and then build up and then just attach it to here. But I'm gonna make sure that where I'm attaching it is the back. Like you can tell what the front and what the back is. It's kind of like really bulky right here. That's fine. That's, it's what I'm gonna deal with. So I'm gonna do the same as I did for the shoulder where I'm gonna go this way, up, back, up, back, up. Just keep doing it. I'm gonna start off with my slip knot and then into the bottom corner here, I'm just going to do a slip stitch. So you're just yarning over, pulling through everything. Then I'm gonna chain three, one, two, three, Yarn over. I'm gonna do two double crochets. All right, so that chain that I made counts as one of my three double crochets. And then as always, I'm going to chain one, do three double crochets. Okay, so here's the thing. I don't think I need to show you this part again just because it's exactly what I did. For the shoulders, it's the exact same method where I'm gonna go here, stop, move over, work my way back, stop, go up one, come back. So I'm doing the exact same thing I did for the shoulders. So when I do have to connect to the other side, I will come back and show you what I'm doing for that. But I think this is straightforward. If you followed me through the shoulder parts, you understood it, then you're gonna understand this. It's just instead of doing the shoulder, which was only this wide, I'm doing it this wide. What I did is I did how many layers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I did seven rows. Now I'm just going to flip this so it is good side to good side. I'm gonna line this up like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna work my way 
down. So that's why I left up at the top. So then that way, when I do my ribbing, the extra strands will be hidden and they're not going to be so visible. So I can just hide those in. And then what I am going to do is I am going to put the safety pin just down here. That way it doesn't move around on me too much. And then when I get to there, I'll take the safety pin off. So again, I'm just going to do a bunch of whatchamacallits, slip stitches. So I'm gonna insert my hook into here. I'm gonna yarn, where's my yarn? I found the yarn. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm just gonna pull through everything. As you can see, if I pull this up, I'm going through the two over here. So when I go to the next one, I go through two stitches. And then on the other side, I also go through two stitches, yarn over, pull through everything. And now that at the end, through there, through the bottom there, yarn over, pull through everything, scissors, cut the yarn, yarn over, pull through, pull tightly. There I have one side done. Now I just have to do the other side and then the ribbing. I have both sides done. Now I have to start doing the ribbing. I'm going to do my slip knot. If you've seen my other tutorials on how to make ribbing on my other cardigans, I'm doing it, I'm doing it the exact same way. Nothing different, so if you know how to do it, you know how to do it. I'm gonna insert my hook here, just in any stitch here on the bottom. Maybe I zoom in a little bit so you can see that bit better. So that's the slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Realistically, I only want it to be four high, but the reason why I did the fifth one is because once you get to the end, you always have to add an extra stitch onto your end before you move back. Otherwise, it's gonna be all wobbly, but if you add the extra stitch, you'll have a flat line. I have learned this from experience. And now I'm just going to be doing a ribbing effect. That's what I'm calling it. And these are all gonna be single crochet. So I'm gonna skip the fifth chain that I made, go into the fourth, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So these are just single crochets. Everything else was double, and now we're doing single. All right, now that I've done four, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into the next stitch down here, insert my hook, yarn over, and I'm going to do a slip stitch, such so as pull through everything, and I'm gonna do it one more time into the next stitch. Then I'm gonna turn my work over, looking at it like this now, and then I'm going to work my way back up just doing single crochets. So I'm gonna skip the two slip stitches that I made down here. To create this ribbing, I'm always working in the stitch away from me. So I'm sitting over here, so this stitch like right here is towards me and the back is away from me. Always working in the back one. So insert my hook into the back one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Repeat this step until you've reached the top. Flip it over, now working my way back down. I'm going to skip the chain, that extra chain that I made, insert into the back. Always what's facing away from you. I'm going to insert my hook into the back, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two doing that three more times, so there's a total of four. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm going to I'm going to go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through two, go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through two, so just doing two slip stitches. You just have to continue doing this all the way around, and then when I'm back here, I will show you how to finish it. Now that I have finished the bottom part, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that it is good side to good side. I'm gonna line these two up, and I'm going to do a slip stitch. So here's this, gonna go over here, there, do a slip stitch, and then I'm gonna do slip stitches all the way down. That's done, scissors. Then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, pull tight. And then because this is where I started, I'm gonna do a double knot, and now the bottom is done. All right, I'm gonna quickly show you how I tied in my loose end. So I'm gonna use my yarn needle, the end here, pull that through, weave it in and out. And that's why it's kind of nicer to leave longer tails because it's kind of a little bit difficult for me right now. Back and forth. And if you don't have a yarn needle, you, know, you can also just use your hands. And then you just kind of like keep like weaving it back and forth until you don't see it anymore. And the 
Fest is done. I absolutely love it. I, I just think it is so, so stinking cute. When I was like just starting, I'm like, this is probably going to be one of my favorite crochet projects. I'm sorry that it's so bright over there. I don't have a curtain and I have to find a curtain. And know what's so funny is I, what, what happened? I had just found a curtain for the camper. Now it's too cold to film in the camper, but that shade of curtain is like a brown and that doesn't really suit the room. And I have to say, this is probably one of the quickest crochet projects that I've done besides making like little cup cozies for my ice caps. But other than that, I think this was probably the easiest thing because all I had to do was just make a giant square, make some sides and make some shoulders and do some ribbing at the bottom. And that was that. Unfortunately, I can't really give you a time period of how long it took me because I don't just do this project in one sitting. I also have to like take an account that I have to film everything. And then a lot of times I make mistakes while I'm filming. Then I got to refilm it. And then I got to talk while filming it. So then I got to figure out what to say. But anywho, you probably could make this in a day. You definitely could make this in a day. So a lot of the questions that I do get in my comments is how much yarn did I use? How many grams did I use? Simple answer, one ball of each color. Even the black was only one ball and I didn't even have a full ball of black to make this. So I was able to do shoulders, the sides, and the ribbing with one, one ball of black and it, I still have extra yarn for all of the colors. Just one, just one ball and I still have so much yarn left over. I guess the color that I used the most would besides the black and I had enough for the black would be the purple color. This is still how much yarn I still have left over from the purple and that's doing the front and the back. You don't need a lot of yarn for this. So I do get a lot of comments asking how many grams it is and I don't like I don't weigh my uh, yarn in grams or project in grams. I just don't do it. I just be like, oh, it took one ball. One ball of yarn is all that you need. All the yarn on here is impeccable, I believe. I think this one might be the Craft Smart brand, like the white, but for all the other colors, it is impeccable. And you get 127.5 grams in one ball of yarn, less than that for each color. So that's all, that's all the information I got for y'all. So just letting y'all know in the description below, I will be listing the colors that I used, the crochet hook that I used, how much of each color, even though I just stated it here. Although this was kind of a tutorial, it was really just me figuring it out as I went along. But if you are interested in making it, I will be leaving the dimensions in the description of the squares, the shoulders, and the sides. Again, you got to do your own measurements for your own body. So that way it fits you perfectly. This is how it fits me. I think that is it. So if you're new to my channel, like sewing, crafting, and mainly through why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.